the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We will go into the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who were not able to um, come to the church to be a part of the general confession, I ask at this time that you please make an examination of conscience. And now I ask to please recite along with me the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his power given unto me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for all of us. O oh God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For through the fig tree blossoms not, nor fruit beyond its vines, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and exult in my saving God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, merciful God, you called us to leave the barren ways of the world and return to you. Give us the grace of repentance that we may live our lives in accord with the teachings of your Son, Jesus Christ, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray, O God, our Creator and Redeemer of all faithful, grant that the souls of your faithful departed servants and handmaidens, for Jenny and William Vilga, for Caroline Mishashik, and for Matze Getrovich, forgiveness of their sins. May our devout prayers obtain for them the pardon promised by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. 
As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry and complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians, and lead them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thou shalt you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 9, and the response is, The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The, the Lord, Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your inequities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul, the Apostle, to the Corinthians, from 1 Corinthians, chapter 10. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne stands from age to age. Why then should you forget us, abandon us so long a time? <laughs> Repent and turn away from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin.
Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than anyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when they came in search of fruit, and when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, Leave it for this year also, and I will cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit, he found none. These words are taken from today's Gospel according to Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the fig tree, also known as Ficus carina, is found throughout the Middle East, and it can grow to a height of over 33 feet. The edible fig is one of the first plants that was ever cultivated by humans. Fossils have been found as early as 9400 BC near the ancient city of Jericho. These fossils precede the domestication of wheat and barley and may therefore be the first instance of agriculture known to man. Figs were widespread throughout <coughs> ancient Greece and their cultivation was described by Aristotle. It is well known that figs were also a common food source, not only for the Greeks and the Romans, but also for the Israelites. 
Figs are first mentioned in the book of Genesis, where Adam and Eve clad themselves with fig leaves. And in the book of Deuteronomy, we learn that fig trees were used to describe the fertility of the ground of the land of Canaan. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 22, there is a story of Jesus finding a fig tree when he was hungry. He found that the trees had leaves on it, but no fruit. And in the end, Jesus curses the fig tree, and it withers. Among the many diseases that can affect a fig tree, the most common disease is a fungus known as pink blight, which begins by affecting the fruit. If untreated, this fungus spreads from its fruit to the leaves and then to the trunk, from dying tissues affecting healthy ones, and in the end, the whole tree is destroyed. In today's Gospel, Jesus gives his listeners a parable about a fig tree. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit, he found none. My brothers and sisters, a church is like a fig tree. Its wellness is dependent upon the soundness of its leaves, and in the end, the soundness of the fruit that it produces. The owner in today's parable states that for three years he searched for fruit, found none, and rationalized that maybe the tree should be cut down, for it was taking nutrients from the soil and the other trees in the orchard. But the gardener pleased with the owner, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. Cultivation begins with the soil. It is the foundation by which the success of plants and trees are found. Unhealthy soil will affect its future growth. The gardener pleads with the owner, wanting to save the tree. I am reminded of the words of our blessed Lord, is found in the Gospel of John, where he speaks to all of us, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he it is that will bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers. My dear brothers and sisters, we all need to ever be vigilant, not only to the words spoken by our Lord, but most importantly, to carry the message within ourselves. We are all gardeners of our church, which has been entrusted to our care. May we constantly seek to cultivate it in a positive way for its future. We also need to understand that like any blight, unless unchecked and untreated, the tree, like a church, 
will cease to exist. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Return to you 
Receive these gifts which we offer you this day as a sign of our own repentance. Through Christ our Lord we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, look with favor upon the gifts we offer you. On behalf of the repose of the souls of your faithful children, Jenny and William Vilga, for Carolyn Mishashin, and for Matze Gedrovich, grant unto them, O Lord, perpetual light, and that they may be united with you in all of eternity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us <coughs> and preserve us from all sins and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled, unholy vices. As we commemorate the 40-day fast of your Son, may we gather together with him and give unto you eternal glory. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O oh Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. 
Christ our Lord, amen. Oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so grave and sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father. Giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and an immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens, for Jenny and William Vilga, for Caroline Meshashin, and for Matze Getarovich, all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom, O Lord, you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please be seated. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Thank you. 
may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord.
Melchizedek, I give unto you, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father, on this day we have received your Son's most sacred body and blood. May we be filled, O Lord, with the blessings you have bestowed upon us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray, accept, O Holy Lord, our fervent prayers for the repose of the souls of your faithful servants, for Jenny and William Vilga, for Caroline Mashashik, and for Matze Getrovich. And grant, O Lord, that through this holy sacrifice their souls may be cleansed from all earthly transgressions and attain everlasting life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may it be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light. For he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. celebrated on the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
I bring to mind that on Friday at 7 o'clock in the evening, Stations of the Cross to be observed. On Saturday at 8.30, men and women will gather uh, to make pierogi for the final time in preparation for the, uh, the spring uh, food and bake sale. I also bring to mind that next Saturday I will be away from the parish attending the National Mission and Evangelism workshop of which I am one of the core members and it will be held at our sister parish in Plantsville, Connecticut. There are forms in the back and we are accepting donations for Easter flowers. I ask that you please use the form to be used in memorial if you wish to give that gift for departed loved ones. We have announced that on April 13th, spring food and bake sale will take place. Um, I ask that you see one of our two chairpersons, either Marianne Uchnet or Shirley Medlitsky Floyd, if you are planning on donating. Um, this last Tuesday, when I was traveling to Winsocket, Father Senior Sultishok informed me officially that our parish will be hosting the meal in the upper room. Uh, it will be held on Passion Sunday, Sunday, April 7th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is an annual event that is held each year by the central, central seniorate of our Eastern Diocese. And our dear sister Carolyn uh, is the chairperson for this event. Um, also, I received this past week a letter from our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Paul Sobiehoski, confirming the, um, the election of officers for the 2019 uh, parish committee. And next Sunday, prior to Holy Mass, I call upon all officers to come uh, to church where they will be sworn in before the altar of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, for Carolyn Mashashik, for Jenny and William Vilga, and for Matze Gedorovich, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
job. Hey. Okay.